Joey told Lee to do the wiggle because it was when that LMFAO song was popular. And he's like, Lizzie, you want to go out there? And you're like, huh? What? What? Me? I should have said no. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like cringing as you're telling the story. Why did I say yes? Because it's Joey Diaz telling. <laughs> I know, but he gave me the option. Yeah. But I just, I, I could have said no. <laughs> yeah. So if anything, I did it to myself. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I, not, I was. You surprised me, it's Mrs. It's not his fault. Mrs. Uh, introvert, <laughs> antisocial butterfly. So what you're saying? have joey diaz virtually on the podcast lee Sayan and joey diaz are back podcasting what yes the se last several months they've been podcasting and the new podcast is called the check-in i'm binging on a lot of podcasts my buddy beat me to it he's like hey did you hear your name on the podcast and uh he said i got a real nice shout out from uncle joey oh that's nice and that's the my homie matt homeyer who's who who's been on my old podcast thanks for the invite he told me that uh, Joey did a shout out to both of us, not just me. Nice. I want to hear. Yeah. So uh, okay. just to give you a little pre um, context, a little context for the video, Lee and I have been texting and been working with him with trying to, he's he's going to come back and, and to Vegas and he wants to do some shows. I've been trying to help him to schedule some shows and hook him up with the right people. Well, he got booked at LA Comedy Club. He's going to feature for a whole week uh, at the Stratosphere. Wow. So this is the first time for Lee Syed. So that's going to be super cool. Um, I'm super excited about that. And he announced it right here on the podcast. He gave a shout out to uh, that he's going to be in Vegas. And then Joey brought us up. So check this out. This is pretty cool. Just to test your audiences, you know. I would love that. I think I'm actually really excited that... Um I, I got some good news that I'm doing like my in March. I'm doing like a full week in Vegas. I've never like, I, like I've heard of comics talk about it on podcast, but I mean that's one of the reasons why I'm excited because there's going to be everybody there. Let me ask you a question, just so, so you cool. can explain something to the younger comics. Okay, he surprised Joe. Joe was like, now? five years, I think. How long have you been going to Vegas? I've gone to Vegas with you a bunch. I I, was, I went to Vegas my first time as like a consumer. 2012, I think. All right, I've seen times. How many times did you go there to be associated with comedy? Oh, with you, I would say three, maybe two, three, four times. I would say, and then I did it. I did some shows there myself once, maybe five times. You were there for the Netflix shooting. Yes. You were there with me the first time I did. That's when South you, you and him went on stage. Couple, I don't know if it was the first time. Did I did the went wiggle wiggle. To the South Point, oh, my before. God. We're going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. The wiggle wiggle with Lee Sire. It's funny because I asked you this because ever since I've known you, like I know we went to Vegas a couple times, and then you went on your own as a comic. You know, during those years when you go with me. That's when he came in. Uh, he hung out with us, and he stayed with us for a few days here at the house. In this room, in the new <laughs> TFTR show studios. That's true. He was here. He was, he was pursuing comedy at that time, right? Yeah, he, he had here? just started. Uh, so we booked some bar gigs around the city. Got him a couple guest spots at the club. That's when. That's the first time Matt saw him, and Matt thought he was funny. And he had just started, babe. He's not. I don't, I don't think Lee's like what seven, maybe seven years into it. Six. Him and Sammy are around the same. Sammy Solorio. Had a great comic from Vegas, great fucking heart, Freddie Correa and his wife. And oh, let me back up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hold on a second. Hey, 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 hey. I, just I heard one. your name. Yeah. Your name. Oh, wait. Well, <laughs> he, he said, said your wife. Freddie Correa. What's well, us? Comic. As a comic. You know, during those years when you go with me, we met a great comic from Vegas, great fucking heart, Freddie Correa and his wife. And they were always, they'd always bring us food or they were just good people. They were just good people. And I loved how they treated you from day one. They're great. So I was always a fan of, of Freddie. <clears throat> so, uh, That's right. You've been talking to Freddie. And Freddie even had you out there a few times when we lived in L.A. just doing sets. So just think about the respect you got since then to now. It took you five years to get to Vegas? Yeah, I started. This is my going into my sixth year, I guess. By the time we get to Arizona. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, That was a while ago. That was like three, four right, years ago. Right off the bat, you're doing a lot better than me. Because it took me nine years 
eight years to get into Vegas. Damn. And thanks to the grace of Joe Rogan, who took me to the Riviera the first time. Yeah, I'm well, thank you. I mean, I obviously had a, a bigger step up than you did, but I'm really. And I took Lee to the stratosphere. <laughs> but that, hey, we're the tallest building in Vegas. That don't ever diminish an opportunity you give somebody. Hell no. Because that opportunity led for the owner of the club to see his set. Yeah, yeah. And then the owner of the set then made a decision to ultimately right. give him an opportunity. Obviously, Lee, I'm not going to diminish ever his work because he had to put in the mm -hmm. time yeah. to get better and to go and you know love his craft and just progress right and now he's here getting an opportunity at la comedy club yep. to feature mm -hmm. for a whole week and, and and like you said um he's put in the work he's been doing it and he's not messing around lee when he came out here he was do, he was trying to and, and then he was hitting up other people to do shows. When we went to Skankfest in New York City, Lee showed up, did his set at Skankfest. He was carrying a backpack. He left right away, went to a subway, went and did a spot with Felipe Sparza because he was in New York that same weekend with Rodrigo and Martin Rizzo. And he went to do an open mic. He went to like he's always working. His worth ethics is incredible. And gotta have a hunger for the craft. Yeah, and he ha and he has it. Yeah, he does. He has that hunger, that passion, and it's uh, it's so cool to see Lee pursuing this, and and as I am, and we all ha we all come from different walks of life, right? But it's it's always about paying it forward and helping each other. No one. This is what Ari Shafir said, and it always sticks with me. No one is going to help you more. He, he was talking to some comics at the comedy store. And he said, no one is ever going to help you more than comics. Bookers, mm. people that run shows, you know, the famous people maybe. Someone might discover you like they discovered George Lopez, you know, Sandra Bullock, you know. But when, but when it comes to comics, no one's going to help a comic more than a comic. Like Joey Diaz booking me. To open for him and then giving me a fat check just to do 10 minutes. And also him booking you caused the trauma that I have now. Hopefully that video been burned somewhere. Oh, we got to show the video no. of you and Lee doing the wiggle wiggle. It's got to be scrubbed. It's online. Oh, no. Oh, I will find that video, baby. Baby. <laughs> I will watch. I'll scrub it after I, I watch it. I have nightmares. I, I tried to erase that from my memory. The thing, I know it happened. Obviously, I, I, my body was there. Yeah. But it's just one of those memories that I don't like to replay in my head. I know it <laughs> happened and they tell me, but it's like I cannot see it. I can't. It was at the South Point, but I don't remember if it was the Netflix recording or which one or, or the one. Remember he shot a special? I remember that. Oh, Agustino Zoida. He was, he was the feature. Mm. Lee That's wasn't how I remember. Yeah. He was he there? Yeah, he was a feature. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. Agustino oh, Zoya there. How embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Who'd you think it was? Steve Simone? Oh, Steve was there one time. I just remember because he we've seen each other at the club. Obviously I remember his face. Yeah. And you've told me somehow through the Joey Diaz thing, but I didn't remember him that specifically for that night oh i gotcha i gotcha yeah 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 i'm telling you i blacked out yeah you were <laughs> super nervous i well, blacked out it nerves. was all spontaneous because um i remember agustino had a friend i think his name was john he he did a spot like a guest spot young comic and then before agustino came out uh <laughs> joey told lee to do the wiggle because it was when that lmfao song was popular and he's like lizzie you want to go out there and you're like Huh? What? What? Me? I should have said no. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like cringing as you're telling the story. Why did I say yes? Because it's Joey Diaz telling. <laughs> I know, but he gave me the option. Yeah. But I just, I, I could have said no. <laughs> yeah. So if anything, I did it to myself. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I, not, I was. You surprised me, it's Mrs. Not his fault. Mrs. Uh, introvert. <laughs> Antisocial butterfly. 
Yeah, you surprised me because you were. I was like, "What? Okay." She she said, "Yeah, okay, all right." No, I was one of those things where I felt like I had to, yeah. and I felt like if I said no, I would look like a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Or like I would look at, "Come on, Lizzie!" Like I could just picture him saying, oh, "I feel you. Stop being a no. pussy." <laughs> yeah, no, you should have, and you thank thank you for doing that because we probably would have not got the shout out. <laughs> We would have been forgotten. <laughs> now I have this video that lives online forever for pe- for people to see, oh, yeah. and that I'm never gonna see, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, now at that point, I had opened for Joey in Reno. After that night, I remember I was telling people, "Yeah, me and my wife have opened for Joey Diaz," <laughs> <laughs> which is true. I guess. Yeah, Lizzie, that's a credit. You got a credit, Lizzie Korea. <laughs> Oh, uh, she's open for Joey Diaz. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I basically go up on stage with Lee Sayat, yeah. and we wiggle, dance. Oh, yeah. We just basically wiggle. dance. Yeah. But you know me. Yeah. I, I was dying up there, literally, like, <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like 10 hours, which only probably was 10 seconds. It was short. My worst fear came true. Yeah. Not just one person staring at me. I had all those eyes staring at me. <laughs> and not just saying something. I had to move my effing body <laughs> and not and do it in a funny little way. You're going like this. I remember you're going like this. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. You're doing no, your club moves. Stop. You're doing your club moves. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. You wiggle, wiggle. I <laughs> look like that, baby. You're going no, like, I don't want to look. And, and Lee was going like this, I think. I don't. Lee was like I, hopping around and just wiggling. <laughs> wiggle, 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 yeah. Wiggle, 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 yeah. <sighs> Here's what, what I like about Lee. He's he's so humble. Like, Joey, I, I get what Joey's saying, though. Like, he's saying, you, you got there faster than me. It took Joey uh, eight years to finally do a set in Vegas. And... F- for you know he's saying lee five five years into you know and then now you got a show you got a show booked it's like but look what lee says i'm getting better i'm never proud of you what i'm saying is mm-hmm. eight years it took you fucking five and a half well they, i thank you i'm just trying i'm just trying to acknowledge that like you started from scratch and i didn't that's where you know like we i, I definitely am doing open mics but like you know i i i i, I definitely am doing better he works I, I hard when I look at other comics and the way they struggle, I feel like I have to at least acknowledge that I'm getting shows that I wouldn't at this level. Right, but Lee works hard. He's a hard worker. He's 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 very humble. He's a humble he, dude. He's a hard worker. Yeah. And he's probably never gonna say that, or because he's just that type of guy. Yeah, very generous. But he's also the type of guy that he has to acknowledge in his world the reality of the truth. Well, yeah. Of uh, you're Lee Syatt, though. You're Lee Syatt. You're a bad motherfucker. He is, but do you understand that in his in his paradigm? I in get his it. paradigm, he believes that he got here. Yes, because of his hard work. But the opportunities would have come. Yes, but they would have come later. He's saying they maybe came a little faster because else, yeah. of the opportunities that maybe he was given, but maybe Joey Diaz wasn't given at the same I'm rate. I'm taking Joey's side. <laughs> he worked hard. He deserves it. You're taking Lee's side. <laughs> and we'll just have to leave it at that, okay? You know? I'm going to stick with my Cubans. <laughs> you stick with your Jewish people. As I will. All right. Because, hello, I'm with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 25%, baby. All right. Let's see. I told you were at the right place at the right time and you came through. Nobody gives you nothing. Being at the right place at the right time is always by chance. You always say it. You've told me this and everybody's, if you haven't heard this before, luck is where opportunity no. meets. Prepara- no, preparation. No, no, okay. Let's <laughs> close. Preparation. Hold on. Tell me. <laughs> What is it? How does it go? <laughs> Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Okay, there you go. So you have to do the work first by preparing. Right. Okay. And then when you prepare, then that's something that could take days, years. Mm-hmm. But when then God, the universe says, you know, says it's time, 
you've been preparing so now the opportunity opens because you've been preparing god says you're ready yeah that's not okay. luck but people see that you got the end result and right. they say oh he's lucky but they don't see i've been preparing you've been preparing look here's here's the thing i get what lee is saying and he might think in his head that people might view him that way idiots assholes will they will because there's always going to be idiots and assholes so they will view you that way i get what lee's saying and he's being humble that's the right thing to do but he deserves that shit because he was prepared when the opportunity came yeah because they're not going to just book you um basing on who you surround yourself with no. you have to end of the day uh they're putting their money on the line it's right. a business and so they want to make their customers happy so they want to assure that you're going to make people laugh mm -hmm. so they have trust that he's going to do that without saying names we've seen people producers people that have made their way up quicker we know people like that but you prove yourself on stage in Seinfeld, uh, in the movie, the, the documentary I saw about comedy that inspired me to one day probably do comedy. I think that's what kind of sparked, gave me that little spark inside of me. I remember they are talking about, even though Seinfeld is famous and he's known he, as one of the biggest comics at the time, him coming back to doing stand-up, starting over from scratch, because he's Seinfeld, they're going to give him a little bit of grace. But that grace, that time... It's gonna. It's, it depends. That depends on the people. How how are they feeling that day? It depends who went up before you. They could. They might give you thirty seconds of grace. If you're not funny in thirty seconds, sometimes people tank it after that. If you don't make people laugh, and that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. My my point is, because he knows Joey Diaz, people might say, "Oh, he gets this stage time or this that." But does he kill, motherfucker? Whoa. <laughs> And the answer is obviously. And it must feel awesome to to get booked at a uh, city that's not where you live. Yeah. Or where you perform all the time. It's a road gig. That's a whole different level of achievement, and I think of ex excitement for you know, uh, a growing comic. Hell yeah! I'm super happy for Lee. Lee, let me feature for you. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. What is something in your life that you uh, couldn't recall that you might have, like, that, that, where, where that might have played out, where opportunity met preparation or vice versa? Me leaving my corporate job. Ooh. You were preparing before that. I was mentally preparing with what I was affirming that I wanted. Like, where did I want to be? What kind of job, dream job did I want to go into for the next phase mm -hmm. of that? Well, as the saying says, shit got real. Yeah, it got real, real and quick. And the door was not just cracked or slightly open. It was fully open. Yeah. I think there was no door. Yeah. So <laughs> clearly God was telling me, walk through the door. Yeah. You've been praying for this. You've been wanting to, you know, leave or go to the next part of your destiny. And the new career uh, that was presented to you in front of you, it was something that you had no experience in whatsoever. But here's another thing. You were prepared to learn. That's one of the problems that people don't have. They're not prepared to learn. It's because some people are stuck in their ways and they're settled. They're like, you know, the pandemic came. And their, their job uh, trade was this only, but they're not ready to take the next step to do something else. That right there, what you said, is something that is eye-opening, I think, to a lot of people when they decide to take that leap of faith. You know, like when I, I interviewed on my old podcast, I had uh, a comic that's out here, Jay Reed, and he was telling me how he was a bellhop making hella money in tips, like bank. And those bellhops, they make easily three to five hundred a night probably but the time came where it was his time to like all right it's time to leave this corporate job i got it. i got it. 401k i got all this stuff but it's time to leave and and go and pursue my dream you know and he took that leap of faith and he works now 
corporate gigs. Mm -hmm. So now he's performing for corporate places. <laughs> but in a different way. Yeah. In his own way. He's working cruises, making hella money. He went on tour with Bill Bellamy, Elisa D. That's around the time when he left his job because he won um, a stand-up competition that took place here in Las Vegas. Who Got Jokes by Bill Bellamy. And he got chosen to go on tour with him. I bring him up because I see him as one of my examples when somebody takes that leap of faith, when are you going to go full, like, full throttle, jump in the pool completely, you know? You got one foot in, one foot out. That's the tough part for a lot of people. And I'm very proud of you that you did that. Thank you, know? you baby. I had your support. I can't go back. Yeah. <laughs> I got a taste of freedom. Yeah. And it's, it's not that I won't because you always have to be prepared for what life gets thrown your way mm -hmm. but man man oh man <laughs> well if here's the thing though if and we'll wrap it up with this baby if we wouldn't have if you wouldn't have taken that leap of faith i know this podcast would have happened eventually but it wouldn't be right now mm -hmm. i i know almost positively there's no way we could have done this podcast if you were still there no well with all the amount of time that we've dedicated yeah. for our episodes, our shorts. And, I mean, you know all the time that we've dedicated towards growing this. And yeah, I think God knew that this was going to happen, that we were going to want to do this project together and that, that we needed op to open some space in our time for that to happen. We had to do it, baby. I want to give some shout outs. Yeah. Uh, people have been su very supportive. Chabo 101, Dave Nunez, Matt Homeyer. You know, I've been getting hit up by random people. Like, even some people that don't know me from comedy. And they're like, hey, you do a podcast with your wife? And then and then they discover that I do comedy. You know? And it, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting how the perception just changes completely. <laughs> they're like, whoa, it's like, it's so cool that you do a podcast with your wife and that you guys do a show and it's like it's cool that they could see what like what i'm enjoying you know like i i don't have to be like showing it off you know what i mean like people just see what we're doing you see the 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 stuff the product the hard work that you're doing how the videos get better the content gets better the equipment everything and it's because we have this passion for it and this dream that we're going for and that's why I'm like grateful that that right there, that's why I'm glad that this all kind of worked out towards this because if you wouldn't have left that job, we wouldn't have none of this right now. Not right now, eventually. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, exactly. So shout out to you, shout out to me. Shout out to Joey Diaz and Lee Sayat. Yeah, and all the cocksuckers out there. Oh, uh, Big Mike on YouTube. Hacks. Hacks. All day, Hacks. Uh, all you guys that are always coming back and all the new people have joined us from the new episodes. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today on TFTR. Now, where can people find the next show? Well, I will be glad to let you know where you can find another video. You can find another video right over here or right over here. Yeah. Adios.